So who were the Indo-Greeks? How did these Indo-Greek kingdoms come into being? And also please tell us about King Menander. Right, this is a very interesting chapter of Indian history and an important chapter of Indian history that our textbooks again don't cover at all. So what? let me start at the beginning. How did this Indo-Greek uh, phase of Western India's history begin? So around the third or so century BCE, we have this attempted feeble invasion by Alexander, which was repulsed very easily. And it, it, it ended up causing Alexander's eventual death when he went to when he went back, when he retreated to Babylon. Now, after Alexander's death, his general, Seleucus Nicator, he took over the reins of power among the Greeks. He, there was a brief power struggle between the various generals that Alexander had, and Seleucus Nicator came out on top. And he attempted a new invasion of India, which is recorded by, India, by India's historians. And our emperor at that time was Chandragupta Maurya. Now, Seleucus Nicator came up to uh, Western India, Afghanistan, Punjab, that sort of region. There were some skirmishes between India and the, between the Indian emperor and the Greeks. And eventually what happened was that instead of fighting further, Chandragupta and Seleucus Nicator got together. They came to an agreement. Chandragupta Maurya agreed to accept Seleucus Nicator's daughter as his wife. So they became relatives. Chandragupta became the son-in-law of Seleucus Nicator. And India and the Greeks became allies, military allies. And what Chandragupta did was he gifted 500 war elephants to his father-in-law, to Seleucus Nicator. And Seleucus Nicator used that to forge a great empire in Western Asia, which is west of the boundary of India. So Iran and uh, other regions of Central Asia, etc. So this was the Seleucid Empire. And after the slow disintegration of this empire, small kings and satraps of this, of this empire started um, forming small kingdoms in Western India, in the region of Afghanistan and Punjab and Sindh. So this was the beginning of the Indo-Greek kingdoms. And the Indo-Greek phase of history, it lasted about 200 years from the second century BCE to the very beginning of the first century CE, thereabouts. Okay, that's the rough period of history. You don't have to memorize dates in history. You, it, it's enough to know the approximate time periods because that's what helps you understand the cause and effect chain of history. So it was about 200 years and one of their greatest kings was King Milind, who is known as Menander in the West. So Milind was an Indo-Greek uh, king. Uh, the Greeks settled down in this region and they probably had Indian wives and all that. So they were all slowly assimilating into Indian culture. Now Milind was very well versed in Indian history, Indian culture and philosophy. He was well versed in the Vedas, in Mimansa and Sankhya and Yoga and these philosophies, etc. And he had a debate with a, Buddh with a famous Buddhist monk whose name I cannot recollect right now. Please go ahead and look it up yourself. It's very easy to find. So he had a debate with a famous Buddhist uh, guru. And he ended up be being impressed by the answers that this Buddhist guru gave him. And he, he ended up adopting both the Dharma. So the philosophy and the teachings of the Buddha, which is another form of Hinduism. Remember that. So Melinda became a great patron of primarily of Buddhism. And he was also a very accomplished military uh, campaigner. So he forged a, a quite, quite a large kingdom for himself. And uh, he was very generous with donations and, and uh, in patronizing arts, especially architecture and all that. So all the way in the East, we have certain stupas that have been that uh, are the result of donations given by King Milinda or Menander. And there are certain carvings of him all the way in India's south, all the way up to Bihar. So he was a very accomplished military campaigner, but he was a great patron of the arts and of culture. And uh, he is justly remembered as one of the great uh, Indo-Greek kings. So that is briefly about the uh, a brief introduction to the Indo-Greeks. And how did the Indo-Greeks, uh, Indo-Greek era come to an end? Well, it ended because of the Scythian invasions of India, which happened from northern India, from, from uh, the Khyber Pass. They came inside into, into Punjab 
and they eventually displaced the Indo-Greeks. Now these Scythians also assimilated into India and many people in Western India would have some partial Greek and Scythian ancestry for sure. And after the Scythians, it was the Kushans who invaded and they also assimilated in into India and they gave us some of our greatest emperors. So it's a fascinating and tumultuous and rich period of our history that we are never taught about. So kindly, I would, I would encourage you to look it up online. The information is available online. You just need to uh, search for it. It's a wonderful and fascinating period of our history.